the evening came swiftly, and I found myself standing in front of the old mill, its weathered exterior and creaking wheel a testament to the passage of time. The moon hung low in the sky, casting a silver glow over the landscape. The familiar surroundings felt almost surreal, knowing the importance of what lay ahead. Alara, Marcus, and a few other trusted allies gathered inside the mill. Their faces were grave, each person acutely aware of the risk they were taking by simply being here. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for what was to come. Marcus cleared his throat, drawing everyone's attention. Thank you all for coming. We are here because we believe in a future free from Sir Roderick's tyranny. Tonight, we finalize our plans. The crowd erupted around us as they cheered for a better Elander. I felt a surge of hope and determination, seeing the resolve in their eyes. We had come so far, and now, we were ready to take the final step. Marcus motioned for everyone to gather closer around the large table, in the center of the mill, where a detailed map of the capital was spread out. Our first objective is to infiltrate the palace, Marcus began, his voice steady and commanding. We will be doing this by putting someone inside, undercover. Marcus looked up at me and I nodded. Isabella will be taken as a prisoner into the castle. The castle likes to keep its prisoners working in the castle, even more so if they talk badly about Sir Roderick. From there Isabella has one week to gather information from inside the castle, then find a way to signal our troops, and from there we will move in. A murmur of uncertainty rippled through the group, but Marcus raised his hand for silence. I know this plan sounds risky, but it's our best chance. Isabella has been trained well and is prepared for this. Alara stepped forward, her eyes filled with determination. Isabella, you must be careful. Sir Roderick is a formidable foe, and his dark magic is powerful. But I have faith in you. We all do. I nodded, feeling the weight of their trust and expectations. I understand the risks, and I'm ready. We can't let Sir Roderick continue his reign of darkness. This is our chance to stop him once and for all. The plan was set. Marcus and a few others would escort me to the outskirts of the capital, where we would stage my capture. From there, I would be taken to the palace as a prisoner, while the rest of our forces prepared for the assault. The meeting concluded and Marcus and Alara stopped me before I could go. Alara took my hands in hers, her eyes filled with both concern and pride. Isabella, you have grown into a remarkable young woman. Remember everything I've taught you. Marcus nodded in agreement. We will be right behind you, ready to move in as soon as you signal. Be vigilant and stay safe. I embraced Alara, feeling a surge of determination. Thank you, Alara. I won't let you down. As I left the steel mill, I looked around the village I had called home for nine years. Ever since I was turned into a helpless little girl, this village had been my sanctuary and training ground. I had grown from a frightened child into a capable young woman, ready to face the darkness that had overshadowed our kingdom. The faces of the villagers, once filled with suspicion, now showed a mix of respect and hope. They had come to trust me, and I carried their hopes with me as I embarked on this perilous mission. The journey to the outskirts of the capital was filled with tense silence. Marcus and the others rode alongside me, their expressions grim and focused. We had gone over the plan repeatedly, ensuring every detail was accounted for. Yet, the uncertainty of what lay ahead weighed heavily on all of us. It was still night when we entered the capital city. I looked around at the place that I called my hometown for many years before I got betrayed and turned into a little girl. When I left here this place was a thriving city, of light and laughter, even in the middle of the night, you could see parties and people outside enjoying themselves. Now, it seemed shrouded in a somber gloom, the streets quieter than I remembered, the people's faces lined with worry and fear. Marcus found a secluded area and dismounted his horse and approached me. Are you ready? he asked quietly. I nodded, taking a deep breath. I'm ready. I'm sorry for this Isabella but I must make this look realistic. Marcus said before punching me in the head, making me go down like a sack of potatoes. Marcus and the others tied my hands with ropes, careful not to hurt me, but tight enough to appear convincing. I was to be taken as a prisoner, someone who had been caught speaking out against Sir Roderick. 
Marcus put on a guard's uniform that he stole from a palace guard months ago and put it on so he could blend in. We approached the palace gates, the guards stepped forward, their faces hard and suspicious. Marcus spoke with authority. We've captured a troublemaker, caught her speaking ill of Sir Roderick. She needs to be imprisoned and taught a lesson. The guards eyed me with disdain, then nodded, opening the gates to let us in. I was led through the grand entrance, past the opulent halls that had once been my home. It took all my strength to keep my composure, to appear as the frightened peasant girl they believed me to be. As we reached the dungeons, Marcus whispered a final word of encouragement. Stay strong, Isabella. We'll be waiting for your signal. I was pushed into a dark, damp cell, the heavy door clanging shut behind me. The air was thick with the smell of mildew and despair. I sank to the cold stone floor, my heart pounding with a mixture of fear and determination. I had one week to gather information, to find a way to signal our troops. Failure was not an option.